Well, a very warm welcome live from the Amex. It's the 132nd Sussex Senior Cup final. It's Bognor Regis Town versus Burgess Hill Town. And just ahead of the game, let's run through the two teams and we'll start with Bognor Regis Town wearing their home strip of white shirts, green shorts and white socks in goal for them. Number one is Dan Lincoln. Number two is Joshua McCormick. Number three, Ashton Lee. Number four, Richard Gillett. Number five, Chad Field. Number six is Keaton Wood. Number seven is Captain Harvey White. Number eight is Emmett Dunn. Number nine, Jimmy Wilde. Number 10, Jimmy Mewitt. And number 11, Bradley Deathbridge. The substitutes for Bognor Regis Town are Thomas Scutt, Leon Maloney, Doug Tuck, Holly Humphrey and Harley Bain. So for Burgess Hill Town wearing their away kit of blue and black shirts, white shorts and black socks in goal for them. Number one, Josh James. Number two, Boris Kibier Bono. Number three, Tom Cadman. Number four, Michael Wilson. Number five, Charlie Bennett. Number six, Tanupa Jonah. Number seven, Joe Felix. Number eight, Pat Harding. Number nine, Ross Murdoch. Number 10, Captain Dan Beck. And number 11, Aaron Smith-Joseph. The substitutes for Burgess Hill Town. Josh Short, Farrell Ryder, Josh Tuck, Steve Sargent and Jack Mulleritt. So as I said, this competition dates back to 1883. And that season, Bob Norita's town were just formed and Burgess Hill Town were barely a year old. But the following year, Burgess Hill Town won the first of three consecutive trophies. In contrast, Bognor Regis Town had to wait until 1955 to lift this trophy for the first time. But a most impressive run started in 1980 when they won this competition five years in a row. And that's still a record yet to be broken and doesn't look to be any time soon. But it's going to be Beck to get us underway as Burgess Hill Town will kick off from left to right. Plenty of fans in fine voice from both teams either side. A bit of jesting between the two sets of supporters as well. Whitehawk, another famous Sussex club going down with Burgess Hill Town. And they've been uh, getting a few, well, joyous chants between the two sets of supporters. So we are finally underway. The referee Stephen Hughes gets us underway. And there's an early touch for Kipia Bono and he's given the ball away. Bogner Regis on the attack. Early doors, but a defending to do. His left bridge, he's a danger man, scored plenty of goals this season. And eventually he's been seen off by Charlie Bennett. Ball square. Kept a lot of bodies forward. That's a clever ball. Here's Dunn with a chance. It's into the side netting. Clever reverse pass through. Dunn was in. But from close range, a tight angle. Could only hit the side netting. There's plenty of space now on the far side. Nice ball in behind. Races on. Cadman wins it. But in turn, he's given it away. Round the keeper. It's just the opening goal. Surely it is. Jimmy Wilde. Open to scoring for Bognor Regis Town. It was a mistake by Cadman. Didn't get enough on it to get it back to James. And Jimmy Wilde, who's been a bit of a journeyman round Sussex, has opened the scoring in the Sussex Senior Cup final. It's Bognor Regis Town 1, Burgess Hill Town 0. Woods, lovely little touch there from Lee. And then he gets the cross in. This is two. It's just behind Wild, but still, this good save from James. Jimmy Mewitt almost adding a second, and Smith Joseph back in his own corner flag. Just so calm and composed at the moment and White plays a delightful ball to McCormick and McCormick's charging through on goal. McCormick for two, good save from Josh James. Cabin can carry the ball clear. Easily intercepted and a clever run through. Mewitt's in, he's on size, chipped the ball across but there was no one in a white shirt up with him. I think he was expecting White to be up in the box with him. Mewitt can turn. Mewitt's going to run and have a go. He's got Leftridge trying to hold the line. He has kept his self on side. There's a cross. There's Wild. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. He just got his feet all wrong in the crucial, crucial of moments. Came off his heel. Cadman. And it's straight up to Wild. In fact, he's missed it and it could work out brilliantly for Mewitt. He's clear on goal. Jimmy Mewitt against Josh James. He rounds him and he fires it wide. And you just have to wonder if Bognor Regis Town are going to be made to pay for these missed opportunities. 
And that's a loose pass from field and Smith Joseph with a chance to run on Smith Joseph gets it out of his feet it's on his left foot went for the shot when maybe he should have played Harding in Smith Joseph to deliver it's towards the near post and it's punched away by Lincoln it was just over the head really of Murdoch but now the break could be on the other end with White it's got Lethbridge out on that far side Mewitt's pulled away on this near side it's gone towards Mewitt takes a touch in the area works the angle for the shot gets it low didn't quite get hold of it Josh James there again now Jonah just steps inside his man and finds Beck who's got a pocket of space he shoots from a long way out and keeper makes a save the rebound tapped across gotta be Murdoch can you believe it Book the Regis turn a chance after chance after chance of three minutes before half time a simple tap in and Burnis Hill Town a level. The shots fired in. Seemingly audaciously from Beck. Harding had the presence of mind to square the ball for Murdoch to tap into the empty net. Bogner Regis Town fans can't believe it. Burnis Hill Town fans are in celebration. It's 1 1 here at the Amex Stadium. It's got Beck. There's plenty of space for Cabin on the far side. Instead, it goes to Smith Joseph, who, oh, clever touch from him. He goes for goal. Straight into the arms of Dan Lincoln. Paul Lee. Instead, it goes to Emmett Dunn. Nice turn from White. He works angle for the shot just over the top. But he caught the keeper out, gave the eyes to the far corner, instead, went towards this near post. White loses out. Harding does get across it. Murdoch. He's allowed to bring it down. He's got Beck in support on the edge. Wilson tries to find Murdoch. It could fall for Beck. Just didn't get hold of it. Woods, particularly to that man Wild, who's done well. Is Lethbridge. Lethbridge comes inside, strikes it. Always going wide from the outside of his boots. Wanted the ball played earlier. He's still free down the line, and now that ball's. Well, it's still on as he's running onto it, but Field comes back, but Smith-Joseph gets away from him. Can he lay it back? Is this two? No! Murdoch with an opportunity to grab his seconds. And that was on a plate. The Rocks fans trying to encourage their captain and their team. That's a lovely ball through to Mewitt. Beck's trying to give chase. He gets it across, a free chance. Played back across the face to Jonah, who clears it. Lethbridge there surely would have been better going for goal. The free kick just chips it into the box. A free header. Well, that goes down as a good chance. That wasn't taken. A further goal ahead. And that's loose from McCormick and Felix could be in. Felix pushes it out wide on his left foot, strikes towards goal. And Dan Lincoln with the save, stands up tall. And Felix throws to the floor. Here's Lethbridge trying to make a new for himself, playing in the central position. He's got away from his man. He gets it straight away over the top. He wants more than that. And that's what can happen if you do play a high line. Mewitt gets in against Jonah, works the space for a cross, chips it towards the back post. Free header! Onto the roof of the net from Lethbridge. Taking a risk there was Emmett Dunn. And there's a ball through, and this could be the winner. It's Lethbridge over the top. James not happy with his defence, letting Lethbridge through. Joseph looked out on his feet at the end of the game. He's worked the magic for a cross. There was no one in the blue shirt there, but it drops to Felix in the box. Shifts it onto his left, gets the slow strike, and thankfully for Dan Lincoln, straight into his arms. Starting to fill the air at the Amex Stadium, the Sussex Senior Cup final. But it could be worn right now. Strike gets the deflection. What a save that is from James. And then had it back to him by Kipper Bono. And Felix gets onto that one. Felix twisting and turning. Working the angle for the shot. His right foot saved. And eventually cleared away by Field. Wilson. Looking to find Felix. And he does. Felix checks back, steps over, works along his left foot, strike, gets the deflection, took the sting out of it. 
Once again, Lincoln was able to match up with the strike from Felix. A pass to play, but White has got a wizard foot. And here's a chance, bursting through a goal. Just got trapped on the foot of Lethbridge, but he works it. Important block, that was from Jonah again. And then Cadman does the rest. Ryder, has he found a bit of space? He has, there's a slip, he gets it across. There's no one in the blue shirt there, though there's two Bogleridis Town players down. But instead, Maloney looks to play the ball through. Lethbridge, just two up, there's the support. It's Tuck, there it is! 2-1, Bogleridis Town! You thought they were going to put the ball out of play, they've got two players down on the pitch, but they played on. And the two substitutes combine. Maloney found Tuck, who arrived late and slotted into the corner. The one place Josh James couldn't reach. And in the Sussex Senior Cup final, in the final minute of the first half of extra time, it's Bogner Regis Town 2, Burgess Hill Town 1. Now Phoenix. Cross in towards Ryder. Good break here for Cadman. He hits it first time. His tuck, his goal, looks to be the match winner. Oh dear, it just switched off for a minute, the Burdus Hill Town defence, and that allowed the full back Ashton Lee to go in. He just couldn't pick out a man. And then he does put a whistle to his mouth, and Tuck's goal at the end of the first period of extra time. Looks to have won it for the Rocks. It has won it for the Rocks. They have lifted the Sussex Senior Cup. The final score in the Sussex Senior Challenge Cup final is Bob the Regis Town 2, Burgess Hill Town 1. Commiserations are probably a hard one to take after sort of battling that fierce storm for the first 30 minutes to get yourselves back in it. Yeah, yeah, I thought, I thought to be honest, the first 20, 25 minutes, I thought Bogner were outstanding. Uh, they really took the game to us. If, if you're honest, they really should have killed us off by then. Um, but I've got a resolute bunch and I think we, we grew into the game from sort of like 25 minutes onwards, got ourselves back into it. And I think, I thought from when we scored, I thought we were the better team. I thought the second half, I thought we dominated and really, really caused them problems. And then I, I thought the, you know, in, the, in the extra time, I thought there was only one team that were going to go and win it. And but it's fine lines. Do you know what I mean? We go down one end and we look like we're going to score. They break and they go and take their chance. And, and, and that's kind of been our story of our season. Um, but I'm proud of the boys, absolutely proud, because they've given me everything and left everything on the pitch, which is all I asked. Well, it's a bright spot. It seemed to be the water break that changed things. Uh, I think it was a random injury and you, you yeah, yeah, your team yeah. around. Yeah. And what, what did you say to them to change it? Because it, it definitely just, changed at that moment. Yeah, we just had to tweak our formation, really, because I think... Um, I think we were kind of getting a little bit exposed with the, with them kind of coming out from the back four with the ball. And once we'd alleviated that, I thought we, we, we handled it really well. And we were breaking them up then and actually causing them problems. I mean, Joe Felix was causing their left-back real problems, uh, Aaron down the other side. And I thought, I thought, I thought we, we, if we could get ourselves our noses in head, I don't think they would have held us. 
we had that golden opportunity just uh, sort of midway through the second half. Obviously, it's fine margins, but if you'd have scored at that point, you think. Absolutely, yeah, and I think that's that's the difference, isn't it, between kind of being successful and not. You, you kind of get one across the box if he taps it in. We kind of go on because we were looking strong fitness-wise, and but then that's that's the way it goes. Like I say, it's been the story of our season. But but no, I, I would have been I would have been disappointed if the reaction had been kind of just to lay down and die. But I thought even our reaction to it, the the second goal going in for them, I thought we we kind of kicked on again, which was great. Um, I'm just disappointed from because I think if you lose a game knowing you've been outplayed, you can accept it when you've kind of been in the game and probably dominated for long periods of time I think you think you kind of should have got a little bit more from it well it's a young squad a predominantly young squad apart from a couple yeah uh, and coming through to next season we will, will you keep them together and try yeah, to get yeah. back obviously to the... we've got to sit down now and obviously uh, talk about the players we want to keep um, the nucleus of them will do and like I just said to him out there I said if we can play with that intensity and, and that desire um, then we're going to be hard to hold next year in the Bostic South. But we have to make sure that we keep those high standards because we played against a good Bognor side today and we, we've kind of dominated it. And I think the the difference between Bostic South and Prem is a big step. So we've got to make sure that we hit the ground running next year. We certainly played well today. Uh, commiserations, but thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. that, mate. Cheers, thank you very much. So congratulations. Uh, a, a fine way to, to end what was a season that had so much promise, but you've got something to deliver at the end of it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, which ended up as a, as a very average campaign for us, which was a great start to the season. To, to top it off with a, with a trophy um, it was great satisfaction for the players because they have worked very hard. You know, we've, had, we've been decimated with injuries throughout the season. Don't want to make that as a, an excuse, but you know, they're just facts. And um, I think you've seen in the first half, especially when we do get a lot of players of our players who are good uh, out on the pitch, we are a threat. Well, it's such a fast start to the game. Uh, all of the attackers looked on song, apart from being able to put the ball in the back of the net. Was that frustration at half time that you came in level? Uh, yeah, I, think, I think also when you dominate a game like we did in the first half, and we could have been three or four nil up realistically, you know, yeah. clear cut chances. I think inevitably, as players and, and as staff. And stuff you are going to be a little bit you know a little bit down a little bit shell shot really and then um, I think I showed in the second half because I thought there was for the first 30 minutes of the second half I thought they were the better team you know the nullified us a little bit when we stopped passing stopped moving stopped trying to penetrate and then I think after that the last 15 minutes and then obviously the extra time I thought we took control of the game again and, and missed clear good chances again of course, bringing Tuck on just at the start of the second half, or start of extra time, I should say, he sort of changed things, he just sat a bit deeper and started to make things happen again for you and, and took his finish well. Yeah, absolutely, and um, no disrespect to, my, to our players, and I think Doug's probably the only person on that pitch, for us anyway, that can slot that goal in like that and show that composure. You bang on, by the way, by, you know, we brought Doug on to just give us that bit more security in there, passing, and he brings that, you know, the experience, he brings that calmness about him, and he brings that confidence on the ball that we needed in the second half well sorry the, the extra time and um, you know it was just key for us and it was a really big you know really big decision for us to make that and obviously we're, we're happy that we've, we've won that's it we well, saw out the, the second period of time was there any sort of nerves it seemed like it was quite comfortable uh, there wasn't too many chances against well I don't think it, I don't think it was comfortable <laughs> maybe on, on your position from my position but I think realistically, if that was a league game, we might have even finished with seven players because there was four or five out on the field. So the players have got have great credit for that because you know they work so hard. They've worked so hard all season. Things haven't gone for us right. Uh, we've had, haven't had the luck we needed. But you know, I'm not. You know, there's other teams who have had their problems. But I think you've seen today a team that's um, together, worked very hard for each other, and you know we finally got off the line. And is this a kickstart? Is this for, to bring this into next campaign at leader a real promotion charge? Is, is that the the hope? The, the catalyst it, it has to be and, and hopefully you know I've said to the players you know we've got to go away now recharge the batteries in the summer and we've got to hit the ground running in pre-season and then uh, you know everybody knows including the supporters that you know the season can disappointing because obviously having, having this win has obviously topped it off a little bit but then um, you know we know as Bognor Regis Football Club we can't be finishing 14th in this league and uh, we'll endeavour to do everything we can to get us back in that top five which I'm pretty sure hopefully the additions we'll get in in the summer that will, you know, will be a match for anybody, and hopefully we'll be in that, you know, top five come the end of the season. Well done, stay congratulations, and have a good rest in the summer.